Okay, so this is how to make a Google Earth tour from your Strava file and overlay the map onto your tour. So you go to Strava or anywhere else. I'll go to Strava, export your GPX file. Here it is saved. Go to your Mac, show and finder. I renamed the file to a smaller file name, but it doesn't actually make that much difference. Um, Google Earth does kind of grab that whole file name from Strava and bring it into your points. But anyway, that's what I used to do. So then back to Google Earth, and Google Earth is the main app that you're using to do this. So what you want to do is make a nice track and tour of all those points. So you open the file, grab the file, choose those options, create KML strings, in it comes. And now this is where there's a couple of tricks. So it goes into GPS device, you can see there. And there's my whole route. Now one thing I wanted to do was not have the entire route. So I'll show you how I did that. So having watched a few other tracks, uh, videos like this, I saw copy as tracks. I don't think it really makes a big difference. But copy from the temporary files, you can use a file structure up the top there. What's important is you've got this concept and then you can kind of delete those afterwards. So yeah, there's a thing about copy with tracks and anyway, made it into a folder there, pasted it in. I'm still experimenting a bit as well, but the key thing is you've got points and you've got a path. And the path, when you select it, you'll see it has the nice smooth run. Whereas when you pick the points, you can see all those little high resolution dots every two seconds. So there's all your points. And what I wanted to do was eliminate the points and just have this cradle tour. So what I saw how to do this was zoom in and find the first point you want, and as you can see, so as I get in there, that's where I started my loop. So I saw there that that's 626 or 620 point, point 620. And then when I was leaving, it was 1886. So then I remembered that. So I went and searched in my points list for the first piece, 620. And then I saw that's that point. And then there's a lot of points here. So that's why I wanted to eliminate them. So you scroll all the way up and you get to the top of that list of points, hold down shift, and then just delete all those points. And then you can say yes, and then you can see all those points have gone coming in. The reason you can see multiples is that I've still got other points listed from the, from the main file. We'll get rid of those just now. And then I wanted to get rid of the outgoing points. So I went back and checked what it was, typed it in, found that point, went down to the end of the list, it tends to be a time sorted list, so scroll right down to the end of the point list and delete all those points so that you're only left with the points, so it's like shift, click, and then delete, and then so now I only have, if I eliminate the other points, there you go, so you can have multiple points picked, so now I only have above in my work, main working area, I'll get rid of those I don't want to see them anymore, it just helps me to get rid of them because otherwise you tend to get pulled back there. So it's best to clean up all the other stuff that you pulled in. Now I have a list of points that are just in my main cradle loop that I want to look at and use to make my tour and my path. So I sort of eliminate that. Um, that's my main working folder. So you can see a bit of a summary. Don't really use that. Um, but the main thing you do is you, for when you have a list of points, you add a path. And a path is a really useful thing and you can label it as well. And a path is that nice um, drawn line that the map uses. And so it is nice to be able to see that. And paths you can color in and when the map's moving you can see things on it. And actually the path is more interesting than the, than the points generally. So that when you select the path, you'll see it um, on, on the map and you can then look at that path, you can you can make colors of it and you can also um, do things like make a, a tour of a path. So going back to the path, uh, just fiddling around a bit here, um, you can choose a set of points 
you know, as you can see, I made another path. So kind of experiment with how this all works. And you'll see I actually ended up making two paths. I couldn't find it, but they were down there. So then I went back and I just deleted that path. So I only wanted one path. And what I did was I moved this path, deleted the one I didn't want because I'd made, made two. And then I cut that up and put it where, where I could find it. I called it June 16 Cradle. So these are just like file structures. And then I wanted that up in my other little area here, my wiki folder. So I did a paste. And I've got my path, June 16 Cradle, that I worked with. And as I said, a path is a grouping of points. It's a nice line that you can then um, work with. As you can see, that, that path there is still created probably from the one that came all the way from Joburg, whereas that path is really the one I'm interested in. So anyway, as you can see, key thing there was making a tour. And a tour is not always that obvious, but that little area there where I'm clicking is the tour tour to a sort of preview. When you click on that, now you see what it's done. It's actually picked up a different path. This is the path that was originally just made automatically of where I started in four ways, and I don't actually want that path. So you'll see that I'm going to delete that to get rid of it and hate confusion. But anyway, you can see that points. So I think what I did here was I said, let me get rid of that path. Because you see, that's the path from Joburg. I don't want that path anymore because it just kind of causes confusion. So try and be clean and clear on where your data is. Generally, you don't want to see the points, so turn them off there um, because they, they're very sort of dense sets of points. And once you have a path made from a set of points, you don't really know what you want. So what you actually want to do is go to the path information info, and it's got two things. It's got the line color and the label. So if you make the label 0% and the line color 100%, then I'll get back my color of my path, make it green, and then it shows on the screen, and then I don't have that label, I just make it invisible. And now I'm where I wanna be, where I've got my path, and I'm showing the, the track that I went, and this, this, the tour preferences, which you'll see the screens again, are really the, the heart above the object, so these, these are quite interesting to play with, and you'll play with these a lot to get the angle you want, camera angle, height above the subject, speed of the movie, there's lots of the fiddle with, so generally I do lots of previews here and keep going back to the start. And you know, until you're happy with the detail you want to see um, in your tour. So when I'm happy, then I'll record the whole thing using QuickTime not actually using the Google Earth movie, I'll show you why later. But now, you can watch this nice, and that little time bar, they always close it. Because that, that time stamp is quite important to me when I am trying to put down video on top of this. So that, that, that time stamp is quite key, where the map is in case you're adding bits of video. So yeah, lots of experimentation with angle, tour, and you'll find that if you have a tour already made, I tend to keep the settings until you kind of go back and recreate the tour. And then that tour bar there, that preview, you can slide along, you can slide to the end. So you can do quite a lot to fit all that. And when you're ready, you can save that as a tour. And that can be pretty useful to come back to a particular tour with a particular set of angles. And yeah, when you set your tour preferences um, and then you create the tour, that should keep all those settings. So you could have multiple tours with different angles, different speeds. Uh, from the same set of points, so tours are pretty, pretty key to this whole visualization of the of the path, um, and the path color and line dictates what you see. Um, and I'll show you this now when we save the the tour. So now this is where you can choose to add to your view, like normal Google Maps, uh, Google Earth rather. You can add all these different features, so you can add layers. Um, Going back to preferences here, and I'm deciding to go a lot closer. So now you'll see the camera range. I go back and recreate the, the tour because that tends to be what you have to do. Um, and the tour is like a temporary thing. You can see I've recreated it. There's a tour button. So now I'm going in nice and close. So you can see this camera angle is really close. And I'm going in super close on the angle. 
yeah, so lots of experimentation with the, with the tour button. And then this is a nice close angle, nice and fast. So this was nice, but I couldn't see detail around it, so I ended up going right out again. And this is where you add a lot of detail. So you can see roads, photographs, all the things that are really mostly built into Google Earth. And I ended up adding a lot of detail and place names to this map. So I could see things on the screen that were of interest. And then that'll all be captured in your movie when you make it. So you could pretty much also add any details you want using those layers and turn them on and off, including your own custom ones. Back to tour preferences. So yeah, lots and lots of fiddling with tour preferences, stopping the tour, making it again. Uh, what often happens is when you go and you fiddle with the map, you tend to lose the tour, temporary tour, and you go back and you set it again. As I said, that, that little tour button there that isn't terribly obvious um, tends to be recreated from your preferences once you add a tour. And then once you save the tour, you'll have saved it all those preferences and those angles. And as I said, you can have multiple tours that are made with that setting. So I took quite a lot of time fiddling with my, my different angles till I was happy that I had something that represented the speed I wanted to go at. And this ended up being an, about an hour of, 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 of real time compressed into about 10 minutes of touring. So obviously you don't want to watch an hour of, of touring, but you can compress it down quite a bit to be as fast as you want. And also so it makes for an interesting visual story as you're going through the map. previews so there yes see I saved the tour so there was that save button down there saved as June 16 tour the timestamp I'm not sure that did much at all you could add links there etc but I didn't add anything that's and then you'll see the tour in your in your uh, in your file structure there so you can save tours as well and multiple versions of the same Going back to my Strava, and then you can make movies from the tour, and that should work well. I haven't found it works well at all. Um, you'll see now, in theory, I had my movie ready to go, so I choose my settings, and then in theory, you choose create movie, and it creates this nice movie of the of the tour. But I have seen other videos where you just get a black screen, so. I'm um, not sure why it doesn't work out the box, maybe different settings. The other reason I didn't use this movie is that as you can see there's no timestamp on the screen. So I didn't really get what I wanted from the Google Earth Movie Maker. Um, there's not enough detail on the screen, particularly the timestamp that I wanted. So I ended up just using QuickTime Pro to record actually the portion of the screen that I wanted. And that worked pretty well. Um, I also was also able to crop out the bottom part of the GPS coordinates that tend to flash on the screen during the normal tour, um, which in this movie are, is eliminated. But yeah, this this movie for me is a bit too clean. It doesn't have a timestamp, so 